All right, so today we're gonna to jump into Web3 and really understand how a lot of projects are really starting to take it to another level. And one of the things we talk about here on this show a lot is kind of this Web2 to Web3 conversion that I think will happen along a lot of different industries, gaming, of course, NFTs, what we'll see kind of in the innovation of smart contracts, all of that is really gonna take place. And the key here is the projects that are out there doing the work. So today we wanted to dive into a project for you guys. I think you're gonna love it. My name is Paul Barrett, welcome back into TechPath. Joining me today, of course, is the founder and CTO of uh, Network, and that is Mike Caselli. Great to have you on the show. Thank you, great to be here. All right, so Mike, let's get into a, a Network a little bit. Now, many people know this project, they know the token. Uh, we've had this token in our crosshairs for quite some time, and we've looked at a lot of things that you guys are doing. First of all, let's get a range of really the size and scope of the project, the team, all that good stuff. Can you give me that uh, just as an overview? Sure, so, uh, uh, I mean, the scope of the project is basically we're building a metaverse. We started uh, many years ago already, uh, officially like eight years ago, actually. We did uh, already a, a, a play to play to earn game. It's called Mind Runner, and it's based on Unreal Engine Five uh, visuals. And uh, we are currently uh, like around twenty people in the team. Okay, all right. A lot of achievements. I think you guys obviously have made some pretty good inroads here already. Uh, when you look at the level of blockchains that you're currently using, I was looking at your website here. Obviously, you guys have a lot of cross-chain capability here. Tell right. me a little bit about how this is going to work with the project itself. Is there any areas that you see that are going to be more important or, or more, I guess, maybe uh, in an essence of more users, et cetera? What, what's the framework of the blockchains that you're currently working with? So, we, I mean, for us, it's really important that... Uh, that users, uh, gamers will be able to, you know, when they um, buy things inside the game, will have like minimal fees, right, to pay. Because it's, we definitely, that's why we're using, for example, Polygon for people not to be, I mean, because, you know, it's un unlike, I guess, traders, you know, gamers, they, they tend to buy things like daily, for example, in a game, right? So, I mean, when, when you're buying into, uh, for example, an investment, a trade, it's okay if you, you know, okay, you buy now for like a thousand bucks or like 50,000 bucks trade, right? So it's okay that you pay like a hundred dollar like fee on Ethereum, right? Like, okay, that's part of my, you know, my, my business cost. But if you're, <laughs> if you, if you're like a Web3, let's say a player that's uh, been converted to, sorry, a Web2 that's been converted into, Web3 because of the blockchain you're interested in this. And you, just like in a, in a web thing, just like in a web two game, you decide, uh, okay, today I wanna buy a power up for 10 bucks. Tomorrow I wanna buy a skin for like five bucks or like, you know. Right. So it's gonna be crazy if you have to, <laughs> to, to pay like, a, you know, $20 on top of it for, for a gas fee, right? So really, <clears throat> we've really been thinking about it and uh, that's why we're, uh, you know, experimenting with different uh, like blockchain solutions like Polygon and and uh, this. So it's really in the back of our mind to make sure that uh, this kind of thing is not going to happen, you know. That's why also we have actually a, 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 a pay, a, an extra payment method, which is like, a, um, you know, credit card support, basically. Right. So for the web, for got... the web Web two players. Yeah, for a Web two player, yeah, that's coming on, on for an onboarding standpoint, which I think is is a very key element. What devices are you supporting right now? Is it just desktop, or are you going into mobile browser? Where are you going with this? For now, it's only desktop. Basically, the way that uh, we think about it is a metaverse m must be as as much as possible close to the visual fidelity of reality, right? Let's let's make it as real as possible, uh, not considering uh, you know how how uh, wide it will be in terms of uh, users that will be able to play. So and then uh, sort of like you know optimize backward for for mobile and for web. Let's talk a little bit about AR VR. Obviously, Apple did a, a massive drop here with their vision right. product coming out. 
where and what are you guys working on uh, that would apply maybe in that area, AR, VR? Oh, so as we started, actually, we started with VR before we went to desktop and we have developed already uh, like some technology behind, uh, you know, Sandbox or our creation engine. And uh, it was, uh, it is all, all about the user experience and how people can, uh, you know, interact with like uh, inside the creation process, basically. And I think for me, VR is uh, much more intuitive for uh, new users like in terms of learning how to create uh, like uh, a game than the desktop but uh, we shifted the uh, sorry uh, sort of uh, for now into desktop and we're gonna after we're done with the desktop uh, creation engine shift back to the vr one because i mean we already developed parts of it i have tested it uh, recently the new capabilities of uh, lumen and uh, Nanite for VR in Unreal Engine 5, and it's, uh, it looks amazing. It looks like really high fidelity and everything. But uh, yeah, so we definitely are going to be cross-platform for VR and, and desktop. Regarding the Apple, uh, Apple uh, HMD, I guess, my guess is that they did some magic in there, and like probably the magic of it will be the Again, the user experience, that's what I hope. Right. Because like that, that's what the Apple is, is, is all about, right? Uh, I was looking at Marquez Brownlee, and he was, he was showing kind of the functionality of the hand gestures, which was pretty accurate. And if they're just going to get better with that, it's very possible we could see that technology really advance forward uh, in the AR VR side, which would be great for your game, you know, obviously yes, when you look definitely. at first person shooter type scenarios. Let me ask you um, a couple of things about partners. You know, when you look at, you know, cause I was looking at your partner page, you guys have a lot of partnerships. Yeah. When you go into a partnership deal, are, how, con how are these constructed? Are they in depth? How will this work with, you know, integration into these? Explain a little bit about how these partnership deals come together. With like, as you can see here, different uh, avatars actually of different, uh, from different NFT partnerships. You know, we basically port their, uh, their uh, NFTs into the system. So they have uh, a immediate utility and they're not just, uh, obviously just NFTs that you can trade with, right? Other partnerships are, for example, are bridging between the real world use and blockchain. For example, we have a partnership with the agency that's doing uh, tourism, tourism, right? Agency. Okay. Uh, All right. So, so this is like how we look at the uh, partnership, like how we can uh, not just like place like a partner. Okay. We have a partner, but like how we can benefit each other. With the NFT side of things, you know, I, right. we're seeing more and more uh, AR and or you know, much more integrated, more immersive type NFTs starting to play out. When will yeah. you be going this direction? When is Network going to be uh, stepping that up? Definitely already uh, doing so R&D with now. like with AR, yes. Because like okay. I envision in the end, for example, an experience where you go to you know to a Starbucks in a, for example, uh, and you use your phone or you use your AR device, and somebody in the metaverse, in the in the virtual metaverse, in VR goes to the same real location, but the one is like modeled, you know, in the, or like using the uh, Google Street uh, 3D technology now. And uh, you can s interact with him, although he's not there using AR. So like you get between the metaverse right. and the real world, basically users. All right, so I wanna wrap up here on, on the roadmap. And I'm looking at your, your current roadmap some of these things, I mean, you've accelerated pretty quickly, obviously through the land sale, implementation of the reserve, uh, all, the, all the application for the DAO, game launcher, uh, the mine runner betas out. So you've got this Metaverse Alpha 1 coming in Q2. Let me kind of zoom in on that for everybody. Um, right. and, then, and then some other things happening here this year. Uh, talk to me a little bit about, do you feel like this is all doable by end of year Q4? We're definitely gonna try and deliver all of that. Okay, that's what I can say. <laughs> but as uh, every gaming uh, company that uh, is trying to at least uh, deliver the highest quality, you know, project, sometimes you just 
you know, it's just like, ah, that's not good enough for our users. We need to like uh, push more and do better. And it's kind of like, it just sometimes takes more. So yeah. Uh, creation engine is the one I'm, I'm interested in this alpha that's coming up. To the creation engine, they will already be able to create some experiences, like personalize them, uh, you know, socialize okay. there with other people. And uh, it's going to be the start of like the big scope of the creation engine. So that's going to be like, uh, I guess, a taste of what's to come. You know? Yeah. Well, your your beta will go out in 2024. So this is this is going to be critical for you guys in terms of the project rolling out because timing in the market, you know, we're going to see so much, I think a lot of Web3 metaverse uh, yeah. integrations for, you know, many of the blockchains that, you know, you guys have already kind of integrated with, but there's a lot on the plate right now that seems to be timing wise rolling out toward the end of this year and Q1 of next year. So hopefully it's going to be in line with what Network is doing as well. Uh, so good luck to you guys over there. Is there any other area that you guys are working on? So yes, so we, you know, we have developed some technologies to read the wallet for, uh, you know, when you log in into the game and uh, enable you to flex your NFTs in 3D, uh, working on uh, making it so you can not just uh, flex your NFTs, but other players can interact with your NFT and, and, and go to the, okay. to the, to the sales page of the NFT and purchase the NFT. So it's all like, uh, it's very, uh, very important for us to allow this kind of, um, uh, I guess, immersive experience for Web3 uh, for buying and exchanging and, and using NFTs, you know, right out of the, I guess, box, you know. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's, that's kind of like the technologies that we are being focusing in terms of uh, Web3 really. Yeah, that'll be a big leap. Hey, listen, it's been great having you on. Uh, thank you so much for giving us a rundown on what you guys are doing at Network. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. All right, so you guys are my, maybe tuned over on the audio uh, podcast side of things here. Jump over here to the main show on YouTube. It's very easy. Just search Paul Bear Network. You'll find us over there. And the best thing you can do is just join the Diamond Circle. It's one of the places where we drop additional content, our podcast more analysis that we do on charts, et cetera, all that good stuff you guys can catch right here at the Diamond Circle. And of course, if you want to catch me, it's out there on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.